Hello everyone, my name is Payal and I am an in PhD student at Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. So I have given the integrated PhD interview last year, 31st May 2023. And in this video, I will be sharing my integrated PhD interview experience with you. So the, first of all, all the people who have got the interview call letter, uh, congratulations to you. I hope that uh, you work hard and uh, you finally succeed for getting admission here and I will be delightful to welcome you here. So uh, without further delay, I will start. Uh, first of all, uh, I, I just want to let you some things know that I am just sharing here the my experience. Your experience might be similar or different to me but most of the things will be similar so uh, i was the uh, my interview was scheduled for afternoon shift it means that my interview will start from 2 pm and i was the first person to be interviewed uh, after lunch i mean 2 pm so i entered the room uh, in msc interview there are four faculty members in the panel but in the integrated phd interview panel there were 6 to 8 or 8 to 10 faculty members. So faculty members will be from diverse departments, biochemistry, DBGs, CES, etc. So they will ask questions from mostly all domains. And the faculty members are really nice. They will help you if you are stuck somewhere. So the thing is that don't try to be over smart. But, uh, give your answers with a stringent logic if you are sure enough that this technique would work keep on insisting okay so now i will discuss some of the things i entered the room there were eight to uh, nine faculty members in the hall and as we all have uh, filled the admission form and we have written all the details of our matriculation examination our uh, higher secondary examination and uh, our BSc all subjects as I was from biotechnology so one of the person from the faculty uh, members itself uh, he, he would have he or she would have a I mean print out of the application form with them and they start introducing us with the other faculty members and they will recite the whatever were the subjects we studied in our matriculation examination what were the subjects we studied in our higher secondary and what were the subjects which we studied in our UG so that the other members in the panel should have a clear idea about our background and they, they will find more relevant questions which we could answer and he started uh, reciting that I had I had PCMB in my 10 plus 2 so they got very impressed and they said that oh now the B, uh, DBG member will ask you some mathematical problems also and I, I said okay and uh, then again uh, the, uh, they, um, he, he, they I was having I was from my BSc biotechnology background so I was having a uh, little little idea of more, many subjects so I have put all the all those uh, subjects in the form it was biostats bioinformatics and uh, um, all other were there like uh, microbiology biochemistry uh, industrial biotechnology industrial microbiology fundamentals of uh, biotechnology immunology all all subjects were there and he asked that which which one of these is your thorough and i as biochemistry was my favorite so i said Biochemistry is my thorough and I like biochemistry most and I will be delightful to uh, pursue my career in biochemistry and they said okay then one of the um, uh, faculty member from uh, biochemistry background started asking me questions so uh, she she was she was from biochemistry background and she asked me um, tell me about protein hierarchy I explained about it and then she asked that if if there is only disulfide bond in tertiary structure or uh, some other bonds are also there see uh, they used to frame next question from your answer only so try to give a uh, answer in such a way that they they could make a question out of it anyway so then i uh, answered that there are uh, other bonds also in 
uh, tertiary structure and then she asked if there is a protein that is joined by disulfide bonds what type of structure is it is it tertiary or is it quaternary and then he answered and then she she asked that if subunits are a single peptide or different peptides uh, and then i answered and then she gave me a marker and she asked me to uh, write a peptide sequence on the board she was reciting the amino acids and i was i was uh, supposed to write one uh, code uh, one one word code for uh, one letter code for the amino acid and then i wrote the uh, peptide sequence and then she asked me how many uh, disulfide bonds will be there in the uh, peptide and then i speculated and asked uh, i mean i told and then she asked that if i will give you a trypsin enzyme how many fragments will be there i speculated and i said that such these fragments will be formed and then uh, and then i told that if disulfide bonds are still intact then no fragment will be formed only there will be one intact peptide and then she said okay and then she she asked some other questions also uh, but now i discuss about the maths part uh there was a uh, faculty from the dpg uh, dpg department uh he asked me uh, mathematics and physics questions he first he asked me to draw a um, ray diagram for confocal microscope i draw it and then uh, she uh, then he told me that there are there are two points a and b uh if a person go from a to b with 30 km per hour speed and b to a with 20 km per hour speed and what would be the average speed of the person then i calculated and told and then he uh, another person asked me that what is what what is the distribution looks like when a mean mode and median are equal they asked some other simple basic questions related to these things and then they asked me to define standard deviation how it is used some hypothesis type of questions they asked and then the uh, turn of the virologist to ask questions as i was having recombinant dna technology as a subject in my ug uh, they started asking me about expression vectors what kind of expression vectors are there if we want to express a viral protein in a bacterial system what enzymes will i need i explained ligases and all those things and then uh, they asked another question that take a gene um if you want to express it i i mean transform the bacterial cell with that particular gene but that gene is neither transcribed nor translated what could be the pro- problem how will you address this problem what will be your approach and then i said okay uh, i i asked i i gave some answer that uh, Yeah, uh, there there should be i mean but and the first day asked it what what is the requirement for the expression i asked that we will express it using bacterial promoters there 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 should be a promoter there should be a terminator uh, we'll use this 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 type of enzymes and we'll do i explained the whole process and then at the end he asked can't we use viral vectors for the cloning i said no we'll use only plasmid vectors uh as in my course there was no viral vector as such so <laughs> they started laughing and then told by how we are using if you if we can't do and then i i said i am lagging maybe somewhere so then uh, they asked to did you read all uh, about all these things i said no but they said you have rdt what did you read i said that i read about bacterial systems not the eukaryotic and viral systems then they said okay they started asking me what did you read i i explained that i read about pbr322 and puc19 cloning vectors and all and i i said that i read about cloning vectors not much about expression vectors and they said okay uh and then then they said uh, can i use pbr322 for the expression uh, i mean i said no it is a cloning vector then they said okay uh then they said if you want to uh, if you want to do the same thing for eukaryotes uh what will what will be your approach and for the eukaryotes i assume that they asked me about plants because i had plant tissue culture in my ug 
so i started explaining about uh, ti plasmid vector expression system i mean ti plasmid expression uh, ti plasmid acrobacterium system so then i explained many things and uh, then he asked uh, i the, uh, i have uh, recombinantly transformed a bacteria but the protein is neither expressed not translated uh, he asked me what is the problem then i said there there might there might be some issues uh, with the polymerase and all then he said everything is okay with the bacteria there is something else some other problem is there then i said that uh, uh, there may be codon bias then he said okay and then he started asking me about if if how will you find that mrna is expressed or not in the system then i said we we can uh, use dna affinity chromatograph after making the lysate and all then he said no there is very small amount it won't we won't be able to find it using dna affinity and then i said microarray it is more accurate and then they started laughing because as it is very expensive we can't use uh, such expensive technique for this small thing then they said me to ask something else then i told that we can use nadran plotting and they said okay and then the another professor came uh, he started asking me uh, he gave me a linear equation a circle equation i mean they gave me the two equations and they asked me to find the intersection point of it and plot it on the board and it took another couple of minutes and uh, then they asked me and there was another professor uh, they asked me about uh, what is the role of pyruvic acid i started explaining its role in um, i mean the carbon metabolism um, but and he asked what are the what are the number of carbons in it and then he asked about what is the role of transamination reactions in it and some other horrible math question which i am not going to discuss here so overall they will and some lab maths was also there i mean some chemistry molarity molarity kind of things and some other cell biology signaling uh, pathway things was also there so uh, overall they will judge you uh, based on their overall your overall academic background uh, whatever you have read it, uh, studied in your ug and or whatever you are interested in first they will ask you your favorite subject and they will start asking questions from your favorite subject and then slowly they will go to another subject also so uh, the main thing is that Uh, everything will be fine they will ask you basic questions if they first they will before asking they will ask whether you know about this thing did you heard of this thing then only they will ask ask questions if you said no then they won't ask they, because they don't want to waste their time also and my interview last for about 40 to 45 minutes i have explained the things in uh, 12 13 minutes Uh, in uh, interview is not stressful we we used to feel nervous but the thing is that they the the panel people were very friendly they they were enjoying the process and suddenly you got comfortable and you also started enjoying so uh, i was also very nervous i said uh, i have done so many things wrong or so many things right but actually they were they were testing you based upon your i mean your uh, research aptitude how you can tackle the problem if how you, how will how will you deal with the situation if one thing is not working what you will do like they used to ask alternative techniques like they, in my case they asked i said dna affinity they said no i said microarray they said no they yeah, so the thing is that you should know the techniques which are used for similar purpose if they al- they'll ask you for the alternative techniques you must be ready with at least one alternative and uh, what i have observed that mostly they uh, they will ask you questions uh, what what you i have answered they will frame they try, will try to frame the uh, next question from your answer only so i think i have explained most of the things with you and but still if you have any doubt you can ask and one two three things i would like to uh, tell uh, don't forget to learn about techniques prepare your one or two most favorite topics and if you are preparing biochemistry don't forget to prepare proteins and for cells signaling pathways are must and no cytosis exocytosis all those pathways so wishing you the best who the people who have got the interview call i hope you you should get selected so uh, wishing you a great career ahead best wishes goodbye see you soon